Hi, Travis with Splunk here. I've been helping my internet service provider test a new radio for my home internet connection. They asked the other day if I can tell if, you know, the WAN interface goes down or that radio goes down and if it's caused me any problems, you know, with my internet. I decided to look at the logs that I'm collecting from my OpenSense firewall and I actually walked over to the box, grabbed the Cat5 cable and unplugged it out of VM0 interface which is my WAN port, to see what logs it would generate. And you can see here, um, I've got this chart put together to help me visualize how many seconds I've actually had downtime. Now, EM0 is the one for my WAN interface, and I had 44 seconds. But how did I get 44 seconds? Is that in the log files? No. What I used was a transaction command. And if you haven't seen the transaction command, that is the point of this video. I am going to go in here and show you how I built this dashboard, or not dashboard, this is a saved report, but how I built this report search to calculate the duration from one event to another. So before we get any further, let's jump over to the documentation and talk about transaction. I already have that document pulled up go there you know you can go out to your favorite search engine do a search on Splunk transaction you should be able to find this or look in the description below I'll make sure to include all the links there but the transaction command what it's going to do is take multiple events you'll give it a common field between those multiple events and it'll group them all together and then it creates two new fields duration and event count and that's how I got my seconds for the downtime and now if we keep scrolling down, we can see other parameters. You can go through this documentation because you will need to look at your data and then adjust all of these different syntaxes parameters to your needs. And you can scroll down and see a lot of different options, even the you know max span, max pause, max events, starts with, ends with, and starts with and ends with is what I use. And you'll see that here in a second. And then if we click on, you know, there's usage, basic examples, uh, the basic examples. I'll give you an example of how I used this in a previous role. We had email data coming in. Once it was ingested by Splunk, it actually broke that email up in different, you know, different events for like from was its own event. To was its own event but it had message ID in both of them. And even the body of the email was its own event, but it had message ID. And I was able to use transaction and some combination of max span and max pause to bring that email all together as one event. And that's where the max pause, you know, it's like it says right there, look at a span of 30 seconds. And if there's not a pause of five seconds or more, you know, bring all those events together. With that, let's jump back to the report that I had created. And when I was you know, building this out and I was looking at the EM0 WAN interface, I started to notice my EM2 interface seems to go up and down a lot. Uh, and that's you know funny because it's the computer I'm using right now. It's direct hardwired to that interface, you know, Cat5 cable plugged from my computer to it. Nothing else is using it. So why am I having these events every day? Now, if you, you know, after you've saved a report like this, you can actually click on one of these, you know, bars and drill down into that event. And here I'm looking at, was it September 25th, you know, that day, and it grabs my base search. And I'm going to do a control pipe on a Windows box. Mac, it's like command pipe, but control pipe on a Windows box, and it will, you know, organize it a little bit better. Here you can see my base search. I'm only looking for the keywords, and I've got it wrapped in quotes, link state change. There's a lot more events that come up, but I was really just keying off all, on those two, and I wanted a duration between those two. I actually had to, because I'm not breaking up this data correctly, I had to go out there and do a field extraction and create a regex to grab my interface and status. If you haven't seen me 
do field extractions before. I've got a whole video on that. But in short, all I did was expand this out, click on event actions, do extract fields on an event. You know, you can see I did it on the both of them here. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to back up. And what I'm going to do is let's let's break this search down line by line. So I'm going to delete, you know, copy this, delete it, rerun the search. Because I don't know, I don't want to jump too far ahead and then confuse somebody. But here you can see without the transaction command what it looked like. And, you know, I have an event at 1108.52 and then that was my first down event. And then 1108.55, that was, it came back up. And then it went down again at you know 11.08.56. So it just kept going back up there for up and down there for a little bit. And I was actually doing that on purpose to test out another theory of why I think um, there's so many disconnections. But here for the field extraction, all I did was event actions, you know, click expand this down, click on event actions, do extract fields. And then regular expression next. And I highlighted, you know, the interface piece that I wanted. Interface, add extraction. And then I did up as my status. Be careful when you are, and I point this out in the other video, you know, be careful not just to double click it because it could get an extra space. But you can see down here that I am getting the extraction. I showed the regular expression, you know, <laughs> and highlight today, copied that. And then went back to my search and did a rex command. So, oops, pipe rex, wrap this in quotes, and rerun the search. And you can see that I'll have my two new fields once the search is done right here, interface and status. And that's how I did that. And then let me paste, oops. I will can't paste now, but I will back up the search, do another control pipe. The search interface, since I did click this on from a report or a chart, it actually inserted this so I don't see anything. You know, if I were to replace EM2 with zero, I don't believe I have any events in the last or on Monday. If I open this up to the last seven days, you know, I will find those events that happen when I manually unplug the wire and then the transaction command so what i can do i'm just going to delete this here and then bring up the transaction command for yesterday's events or you know what i will do it in the last 24 hours so let's do that 24 hours now with the transaction i tell it because i'm using my regex command here to you know, create me, you know, create two new fields, one's interface and one status. Interface is common with both linked state changes. So I wanted to group them up together. And then I have you know, the first event is starts with the word keyword down and the grouping of events should end with up. So it goes in there and starts you know, putting the events together. And once it did that, instead of me having to come in here and calculate, okay, this first one was at 52, this was at 55, so there's three seconds. Here's, you know, 48, and here's, you know, another three seconds. And, you know, instead of me trying to manually go in and do that, I create a new field that gives me that information. And that's how I get my, my duration. And then of course I start going in here and you know working with you know time chart. And then I think I did a sum on duration. You know, you could say something like uh, you know dir by let's say interface. Oops, not preview. And then you can see where I was getting you know each time in the last 24 hours my interface went down and how many seconds each each one of those down or down events or the disconnection events lasted and that's where you know you can come up here click save as and save it as a report and you can have the same thing that i have
Now, what's interesting about this, and I started thinking about it, you know, why would, and here I'll go to reports, and I'm going to go back to that. I got to find it. Open since interface state change. There we go. I'm going to reopen this back up. <laughs> you know, when I look at at this, and I'm like, why is it that my computer loses connection? It's at different times because if I were to you know, even if I go back into there and drill down into it and, and remove, you know, that date and put it back to seven days and rerun this search, you know, it was never at the same time when it would, would happen. But it, there is a common theme between the times. And I started looking at my Windows logs because I was like, okay, is there something going on with maybe not the firewall, but my Windows log? And I actually use the append command. And if you've never seen append, that will take multiple, or it'll take uh, two sub searches, but multiple, yeah. But, you know, take one search and a sub search and bring the data together so you can visualize it. And there's a lot of things you can do with the pen. Now, these are, you know, heavy searches for anything that you're doing. So you got to make sure optimization, your you know, search optimization, but these are very useful. You know, go and you know, read this document as well and learn what you can do with the pen. There's a pen, a pen colons or coals. I think that's what the, yeah, coals, columns. You know, there's a lot of things that you can, you know, start doing here. So going back to the search, I do an index equals win event log. I look at my host, my computer, Travis's desktop, and then source type win event log. And I saw, and I, and I, I mean, if I actually, let's see here, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to back it up and just run this. Yeah, you know, I can do it the last seven days, but I started looking at just the last 24 hours so I can, you know, you know focus in on a certain time period. And, and, you know, look at your, your log data here. You know, what is going on? Can you see something, you know, inside of the event codes and categories? And I've just, I don't remember if I actually saw it in here. But I found, I, I found something about sleep. So let me put that word in here. And I started looking at, okay, I'm putting my computer, because that's what I do when I'm done using my computer. I will put it into a sleep state, but then every, every once in a while, we'll, we'll restart it. Well, when you combine, and I can go back a few searches here, uh, when you combine that data with me, you know, putting the computer to sleep or waking it back up with the time of my link status change, it started to line up. So I can see here, here's the, you know, using that append, you know, search command. I have my first search for when I put the computer asleep or when there's any actions with the keyword sleep. I, I could further drill down probably into that. But I'll just leave it there. But I'm going to append it to my base search that I've been doing for when my status change from down to up and up to down. And you can see here, I have a Windows event at you know 9 22 53 second mark yeah yeah hours minutes and then yeah i have the one event here and then i had this event here i also have one two let's see at 9 22 48 you know i had one two three events and then i have it showing up in my windows logs where I returned from a low power state. If I even look before that, here's one at, and what I was doing was turning my, I was putting my computer into sleep mode and then taking it out of sleep mode, creating that log data to see if it really did match up and it does. And you can see here that, you know, even, you know, I resumed again, but then I, you know, put it into a sleep mode and it caused, you know, more events, you know, the down and then the back up and and whatnot. So uh, this is why I was having you know multiple 
events around my interface going up and down. It wasn't actually anything with the hardware of my interface. It was just my computer causing the traffic or the data. But it's good to identify that I don't have an actual problem with the firewall box, so I don't have to replace that. I know that was a, a lot to go over. Hope this has been uh, useful and showing you the transaction command and how you can you know, group events together and then even the uh, pin command. So you can then take that one step further to be able to uh, pin your know, Windows system event logs with my OpenSense data into one chart. You know, we could go in here and start doing uh, pin columns, you know, something like, uh, now I'm getting sidetracked. So let me, I spell columns right, but I'm going to do a stats count. Um, what do I want to say? By I want to do a count. I'm going to do a host. I'm going to call this as host one. And I'm going to do by underscore time. I'm going to show you this is a neat little thing when I was playing earlier and I'm going to do the same thing down here, except I'm going to say stats count and we're going to say host because it's the same field. And I, I want to make sure to separate the two fields host two by underscore time. And if I run this search, it's actually going to create me uh, two fields, one for host one, which yeah, I could have named it something else. I could have said, you know, maybe just said desktop. And then, you know, interface. You decide what you need it to be. But that's what I wanted to do is show, hey, here's the event that happens on my desktop. And here's the event that happens on my interface. Do they really match up? And you can see that uh, most of the time, yes, I was having the same events at the same time. Now you will, there is a lot more events that are happening on my interface than my desktop that, you know, with this correlation, because there's a lot of events when I'm looking at this, but yeah, that's what the append columns do. And you know, go back out to the documentation, click on append columns, and you can go in here and start reviewing you know, how to actually bring that data together and the different ways you can use it. I mean, there's so many different search commands. But as I was saying earlier, uh, hopefully you have found this useful. I know I just got off topic and came back. And if you have any comments, requests, questions, you know, please leave it in the description, or not description, but in the comment section. I do try to check that. I'm not very good at it, but I do try to keep an eye on that. And as always, Happy Splunking.